Mabuhay, future educators! For today's video, we're going to talk about financial literacy. We're also going to tackle about the advantage of financial literacy. We're also going to discuss the Economic and Financial Literacy Act, the common concepts under financial literacy, financial literacy in the Philippines, assets versus liabilities, and needs versus wants. So without further ado, let's go! First, what is financial literacy? Financial literacy is the possession of set of skills and knowledge that allows an individual to make informed and effective decisions with all their financial resources. So now, if you possess a set of skills or knowledge that allows you to make informed and effective decisions with your finances or financial resources, you are considered a financial literate person. Now, let's proceed to the benefits of financial literacy. Financial literacy prevents financial abuses, which may lead to people becoming victims of predatory lending, subprime mortgages, fraud, and high interest rates potentially resulting in bad credit, bankruptcy, or foreclosure. People could avoid money woos like whirlpool debts by being aware of when and where to properly spend their money. Being financially literate made so many people reach the peak of financial success. Logan Alec, owner of the Money Done Right, listed the benefits of being financial literate. The first benefit of being financially literate is the ability to recognize a bad financial deal. I've had unscrupulous financial advisors try to talk me into financial decisions that would benefit them and not me. Due to my financial literacy, I knew to walk away from those deals. The second benefit of financial literacy is the lower cost I pay for my bills since I make less financial mistakes. Due to financial literacy, I know the negative impact missing a credit card payment will have on my monthly bills. I'll make sure never to miss that payment and I will always try to avoid paying interest. The third benefit of financial literacy is the peace of mind that comes from knowing I'm planning for retirement. Retirement is not something that worries me because I know how to create a plan that will put me in the best possible position to be prepared for my later years in life. Now, let's talk about the Economic and Financial Literacy Act. The Philippine government recognized the role of financial literacy in honing individuals and its contribution in the betterment of the society. In line with this is the passing of the Republic Act 10922, also known as the Economic and Financial Literacy Act. This is an act declaring that the second week of the November every year as an Economic and Financial Literacy Week. Now, let me discuss to you the detailed information about the RA 10922. Section 1. Title. This Act shall known as the Economic and Financial Literacy Act. Section 2. The Declaration of Policy. It is declared the policy of the state to develop national consciousness on economic and financial literacy by declaring the second week of November of every year as the Economic and Financial Literacy Week. Section number three, participating government agencies. To ensure meaningful observance of the Economic and Financial Literacy Week as herein declared, the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA shall lead participation of the government agencies and instrumentalities during Financial Literacy Week. The NEDA shall convince for the purpose the relevant agencies to include the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP, the Department of Finance or DOF, the Department of Education or the DepEd, the Commission on Higher Education or the CHED, and the National Youth Commission or NYC, and the Department of the Interior and Local Government or the DILG. All heads of the government agencies and instrumentalities, including LGUs, GOCCs, and those identified by the NEDA as relevant agencies. 
are hereby directed to collaborate and cooperate with the lead agency in advocating and implementing activities to celebrate the Economic and Financial Literacy Week. Section number 4. Economic and Financial Literacy of Students and the Youth To improve the economic and financial literacy of the students and the youth, all public and private, elementary, and high schools under the DepEd the state and private colleges and universities under the CHED, the Technical Education and Skills Development under the TESDA and the NYC in coordination with the NEDA are hereby mandated to conduct consciousness, raising and knowledge, expanding activities on economic and financial literacy, including the setting up of literature commerce, organizing fora, trainings, and conducting basic economic and financial management classes. The tab ed is also encouraged to assess and revise the high school economics curriculum to make it more appropriate and ensure that economic and financial education becomes an integral part of formal learning. Section number 5. Communications Arm the Philippine Information Agency, or PIA, and the Presidential Communications Development and Strategic Planning Office, PCDSPO, are hereby mandated to allot airtime for programs and produce and disseminate printed and online materials for economic and financial literacy awareness and enhancement. Section 7. Separability Clause if any provision of part hereof is held invalid or unconstitutional, the remainder of the law or provision not otherwise affected shall remain valid and subsisting. Section 8. Repealing Clause All laws, decrees, orders, rules, and regulations or parts thereof inconsistent with this act are hereby repealed or modified accordingly. Section number 9. The last section. Effectivity. This act shall take effect 15 days after its publication in the official gazette or in a newspaper of general circulation. Now we're done with the Economic and Financial Literacy Act. Let's proceed to the common concepts under financial literacy. Investment platform is a vital online service which allows you to buy and sell and hold funds. Famous investment platforms in the Philippines include First Metro Securities, COL Financial, CoinsPro, and Seedbox.p. Next is the funds. Funds refers to a particular amount of money made available or allocated for a particular purpose. Next is the finances. Finances is the monetary resources of an individual, organization, company, or government. Next is the debit card. Debit card is a rectangular plastic used in paying purchase. The debit card is used by swiping a card to the merchant's card reader and entering a PIN, or also known as personal identification number. This allows the direct transfer of money amounting to the purchase price from the owner's checking point to another bank account. Credit card is also a rectangular plastic card like the debit card, which allows users to access credit facilities or allows owners to avail products on the basis of credit. Next is the stock. A stock is a type of security signifies ownership in a corporation and represents a claim on part of the corporation's assets and earnings. Now let's proceed to the inflation. Inflation is the substantial increase of price of goods and services resulting to the decrease of the purchasing power of money. Next is the deflation, also termed as the negative of inflation. It is the great decrease of price of basic commodities. Next is purchasing power. Purchasing power refers to the value of money on the basis of the amount of goods and services that you can buy using a unit of currency. Now, the annual percentage rate or APR. APR is the interest rate in an annual basis charge for borrowing money. Let's proceed to the annual percentage yield or APY. APY is the interest rate in an annual basis paid on savings account, certificates of deposit, 
or other account that earn. Therefore, it is worth knowing that as the world changes, the man's basic needs adapt to it. Based on the meaning that I've mentioned on needs and wants, individual who plans their financial resources must put needs above wants. Now, for our world last topic, let us talk about assets versus liability. According to Robert Kiyosaki, a person can be highly educated, professionally successful, and financially illiterate. Who is Robert Kiyosaki? Robert Kiyosaki is the author of the best-selling book entitled, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, through ATM withdrawal, issuance of check, or through debit cards. Next is the credit score. A credit score is ranking or a number assigned to an individual which reflects his or her credit worthiness. Credit scores are realized by the amount of debts, number of open accounts, and timeless of payment among others. The score ranges from 380 to 850. A low credit score has a high probability of being denied when applying for a loan or it puts the lender at risk. Then the savings account. A savings account is a deposit account which bears interest where you can store money in a bank or other financial institutions. Saving accounts lets the consumer have an easy access of his or her money. Now let's talk about the financial literacy in the Philippines. A state of Financial Education in the Philippines, an article by Go 2017, listed events which manifest the current standing of the country in the financial literacy. An estimated 20 million Filipinos saved money but only half had bank accounts, according to the World Bank study in the year of 2014. The country is lacking of a national strategy in educating Filipinos towards financial education and literacy, according to the result conducted by the Asian Development Bank, ADB, in 2018. The Banco Central ng Pilipinas, or the BSP, released the National Strategy for Financial Inclusion stating that while institutions strive to broaden financial services, financial literacy should complement such initiatives. According to the Standard & Poor S&P Rating Services survey in the year of 2018, only 25% of Filipinos are financially literate. This shows a large percentage not properly educated about financial concepts such as inflation and diversification. Only 1% of the total population in the Philippines have invested to the stock market even if it has been existing for 10 years now. More than 80% of the working Filipinos belonging in the middle class have no formal financial plan. Now, let's proceed to the needs versus wants. The difference between the two is worth knowing. Awareness of this allows individuals from different financial status make informed decision-making in terms of managing their finances. Now, let me show to you the detailed comparison of needs and wants according by Serbi 2016. Here are the basic comparison between needs and wants. First of all is the meaning. The meaning of needs is refers to an individual basic requirement that must be fulfilled in order to survive, while the wants are described as the goods and services which an individual like to have as a part of his cup prices. What is it for? Needs is something you must have, while the wants something you want to have or you wish to have. Needs, it represents for necessity, while wants, it represents for desire. For survival, needs is essential, and wants is inessential. In terms of change, needs may mean nothing. In terms of change, in terms of change, Needs may remain constant over time, while wants may change over time. In terms of non-fulfillment, needs may result in onset or disease or even death, 
while wants may result in disappointment. Needs are the things we need in order to survive in this society. In older times, needs are limited to food, shelter, and clothing. The degree upon which the needs are met affects the functionality of an individual. For example, a student who goes to school with an empty stomach is, is expected to function poorly in class. This is because of the fact that one of the basic needs was not fulfilled. On the contrary, if the same student goes to school with all of his or her basic necessities met, he or she is expected to perform better. Today's needs might include things such as education and healthcare for these things have been proven to be an effective factor in man's survival. Therefore, it is worth knowing that as the world changes, the man's basic needs adapt to it. Based on the meaning that I've mentioned on needs and wants, individuals who plans their financial resources must put needs above wants. In a world where material things give so much pleasure to us, human beings, it is a must to practice utmost self-control in handling our finances in a way that financial abuse will not exist. Now, for our world last topic, let us talk about assets versus liability. According to Robert Kiyosaki, a person can be highly educated, professionally successful, and financially illiterate. Who is Robert Kiyosaki? Robert Kiyosaki is the author of the best-selling book entitled, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is about Robert Kiyosaki and his two dads. His real father, the poor dad, and the father of his best friend, the rich dad and the ways in which both men shape his thoughts about money and investing. One of the noteworthy statements of Kiyosaki is when he claimed that someone doesn't need to earn a high income to be rich, for rich people makes money work for them. Here he discusses one of the most vital concepts in financial literacy. Assets versus liabilities. Asset is something that brings you money, while liability, to put in its simplest definition, is something that takes money away from you. According to Kiyosaki, real assets fall into the following categories. Stocks, bonds, income generating real estates, notes or IOUs, royalties from intellectual property such as music, scripts, and patents. Anything else that has value produces income or appreciates and has a ready market. While liabilities are the luxurious things which needs maintenance like cars and house. However, some liabilities can be asset when used to generate an income like pet, example, a dog, but for the purpose of reproduction and offspring selling. The following things that I'm going to say are the big ideas in the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. Number one, the poor and the middle class work for money, while the rich have money work for them. Number two, it's not about how much money you make that matters. It's about how much money you keep. Number three, rich people acquire assets, while the poor and the middle class acquire liabilities that they think are assets. Number four, financial attitude is what you do with money once you make it. How you keep people from taking it from you how to keep it longer, and how you make money work hard for you. And lastly, number five, the single most powerful asset we all have is the mind. And that's all for today's video. I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys!